Hello, and welcome to Scarlet Serpent Readings. Thank you so much for joining me for today's special, timeless, collaborative pick-a-card reading, um, where I'll be working with Letty from this beautiful place, Tara, um, in delivering guidance messages, really healing energy for, um, in this reading specifically, your shadow. And then Letty from this beautiful place, Tara, is going to be looking at how you can heal um, childhood trauma. and. I'm very excited for this <laughs> collaboration because I think we'd be, we've been back and forth and like uh, trying to make this happen for a while, like not directly, but um, I don't know, I've just been excited to work with her for a while. <laughs> um, she's just very, she reminds me of family in a way, like in a good way, yeah, um, where just there's just no sugar coating. <laughs> so um, I'm very excited to be working with her. Um, definitely go ahead and check out her her channel and subscribe. Um, I have no doubt that you'll resonate with all of her readings uh, as much as I do. So um, with that said, again, this reading is going to be all about healing the shadow. So I have three piles for you to choose from. Uh, I guess I'll talk about, we'll get to it. I don't want to jump too far ahead because it all kind of like, anyway, this reading might take a turn. I'll just put it that way. But this is going to be pile one. This is going to be pile two, and pile three. Um, of course, if you need some more time, you can go ahead and pause the video. I'll have an image of the piles, so you can meditate on them if you need to. But otherwise, I look forward to seeing you at your reading. Hi, Pile One. If you chose this card, this is going to be your reading on how you can heal your shadow, a collaboration with Letty from This Beautiful Place Tarot. Um, so I'll, I'll, I don't know if I mentioned it in the intro, but I'll definitely have a link to her part of the collaboration, which is healing childhood trauma in the description, most likely. But um, so I, if if you saw the intro, I mentioned something about, well, I didn't mention it, I thought it. Um, so the first thing is, by choosing this card, I got really excited when this popped up, because um, in the, it's, it's a very quick power meditation, I'll say, um, and I haven't, I usually don't call in energies or beings or anything like that, but by far the most prominent spirit guide that I have is a black dragon. In fact, I was going to call this tra this channel Black Dragon Tarot um, before changing it, uh, just because I thought this was slightly more approachable. Scarlet Serpent, it's got a nice ring too. But all this to say, I got so excited to see this because I had never considered, well, it, the thought had come up that um, the black dragon was my uh, shadow self. But that being said, I also thought of with the other um, pile selections that it might not all be healing. Um, for some of you, it'll be healing, integration, or an expression of your shadow self. And that's something I thought of this morning, and kind of by looking at the cards, I have a feeling that might be the case, but we'll see. Um, but either way, this card represents your shadow self. Um, we're going to get a few more cards first, just to see the overall energy of this shadow, and then we'll take it from there. <laughs> see what you can do to heal this energy or integrate it, um, but, but we'll get to it. So this wants to come up. Right. So, I mean, straight away, I'm not really seeing anything that needs healing for this pile regarding the shadow. Um, it's this energy within you is incredibly freeing. It's all about freedom for um, the shadow energy, all about freedom, new opportunities, um, and that's very, very strong connection to um, nature. The cards you got are the primordial, pr primeval forest. I might read a little bit from the book uh, on this, but definitely woodland energy, uh, green man, green woman energy here. Uh, the simpleton, which is the fool. And this, again, is representing your shadow's energy. And then the ace of pentacles uh, with the crow. 
being there as well. Um, I'm not going to get clarifying cards for this. So I'm just going to move this up and then tie everything together in a second. But I want one Oracle card as well to get that shadow energy. <laughs> just to see who we're working with. The pillar. Uh, yeah, this one's hard to see. So straight away, it kind of feels like um, the same thing with the dragon being here, a very protective energy. And with this Seven of Cups, it takes a little bit of a different feel um, with the Fool being under here because it feels like protection. It feels like protection, but also protection of the multitude of ideas that you're constantly getting, um, where and this protection comes from um, sometimes you're subconscious, but also from other people, and I feel as though this shadow self is actually the part of you that influences you not to share your ideas with other people, because you just don't want people to get in the way. Um, there's a strong sense of companionship with elves, with the fae, with non-human creatures. I think you're a lot more comfortable with not dealing with humans. <laughs> Uh, because they tend to bring a lot of baggage with them and um, in a strong sense with the pillar I, I forgot about this already but a uh, very protective shadow that you have very very protective shadow and so it's less of an adversary I mean you could take that for anybody I guess but it's not necessarily that uh, the shadow in itself is is good or bad or whatever it's more of the main person, the person's perspective of their shadow as being this or that or whatever. And I think you, um, this, this pile is uh, a bit more advanced in their spiritual journey where they know the role of the shadow and how to work with it and they see the shadow, you see your shadow as an ally. Um, so we're gonna continue actually. Um, how can you heal your shadow or integrate it or express it? Um, just get to that part and then I'll probably circle back to the cards that are up here but actually let's read from the book real quick <laughs> see how excited I am I saw the dragon and all of a sudden I'm all over the place <laughs> like, and uh, I think that is something a connection that you have with your shadow I think is very strong again like it's a part of you that you feel you've been working with for a while. So I think a lot of this, when people say shadow work, um, that's something that you've been doing for a while, honestly. But let's see what the primeval forest is all about. Um, the prime, I'm saying that weird. Primeval forests are unaffected by humans and retain their unspoiled natural splendor straight away. Like that, I didn't read the book or anything, but that's confirmation of like humans let me just just you know you know it's not to say you don't know how to interact with people or you don't love other human beings but when it comes to finding yourself and expressing yourself and prioritizing things you you really don't want any other the the input of people um let's see it could also signify overcoming self-doubts or fear and stopping self-sabotage um the seven of cups can be a little bit of that self-sabotage um, but it says, apply your experience, navigate the uncovered path, and believe in yourself. Navigate the uncovered path, which, again, is, there's a strength for you in exploring things that have not been touched, um, or explored before. There's, um, a spark towards the unknown, and really, it's, it's less of healing, I mean, that is a way that you can heal the shadow, is being in the forest, being in by trees, specifically greenery or by wood, um, but also you get a lot of healing from just discovering new things, running around new places, um, anything. It doesn't have to be a large vacation, although that would probably be very helpful. Um, it's more of taking a scenic route from time to time, um, stepping outside of your schedule, uh, listening to new music, new artists, um, things like that. Uh, lots of, th that's just the sense that I'm getting with not only the Fool, but also the Ace of Pentacles. And I think um, the Ace of Pentacles is kind of the reward that you get for deviating from your scheduled programming. <laughs> um, is There is 
a very serious financial opportunity for you. And I see that. Yeah, with the Seven of Cups, there's a diamond in one of these cups, right? You might not get to it straight away, but it's there. It's one of those ideas leads to that diamond. It's not to say that the diamond's the best and only choice that you have, but if you're wondering about financial abundance or some sort of breakthrough, it's within you already, and it's more specifically within your shadow. It's not something that you, you don't have to wait for an opportunity to... Yeah, to to come forth or um, so oh yeah so we're going to the healing portion um, healing slash integration and I'll leave that in reverse I generally don't do reversals but um, and I'll show you these cards of course and I'll probably try and keep this reading at like 15 minutes or so um, okay so uh, we have the hermit which is how you can heal integrate your shadow and again this goes back to isolating yourself being alone and being in your own energy and really um, not only connecting with the shadow but we also see the temperance card so shadow and higher self they're one and the same we even have the yin and yang up here and so spending the appropriate amount of time with both of them is important. If you look at the bottom of this card, we have flowers and swords. Uh, again, emphasizing the yin and yang. And I think this pile is more of like the integration pile where um, we're seeing where could you could use this, the dragon fire energy to destroy all obstacles uh, within specifically your mind that are preventing you from taking chances, being free, um, and implementing new ideas. Uh, what's interesting was the two of uh, two of cups in reverse. Excuse me. And that's not to say you're not allowed to be in any relationships, but just be mindful of them. Remind, be mindful of how they influence your movement, specifically your movement right where uh, you feel less connected to the forest less connected to your wild side like uh, not to say there's anything wrong with this but <laughs> um, if you have a partner who would rather stay in Netflix and chill and you're like me and I'm just like this is horrible this is so boring <laughs> let's run around it's raining this now that that's more fun I don't know um, like n not to say to in relationships there's always that compromise but don't compromise yourself more than uh, I said that wrong well yeah I guess uh, don't compromise the will of your shadow um, constantly because then that shadow becomes repressed then that shadow feels as though oh well my opinion doesn't matter um, and I almost hear this sh your shadow self saying there's nothing wrong with me <laughs> there's uh, i just want attention sometimes um just as much as your higher self and of course these aren't like external beings it's just easy to categorize them so that like when you're working with these energies you know which one you can focus on at this time at this part of the day um because there is like a a, a wave sort of that happens with that but anyway moving on we have the ace of swords and the nine of swords so another ace and this ace just happens to be right underneath the ace of pentacles which is showing me again uh these fresh ideas are um financially viable options um that might be again outside the box and scary to um to it can be scary to take that leap but that's when you lean into your shadow um this shadow again being represented by the dragon is completely fearless like it's like oh that's scary i'm a dragon like what am i gonna be afraid of um and then we have the nine of swords here which represents i think uh maybe uh, still this fear of um seeing the potential of a dream and it being crushed and just maybe that has happened in a way and i have a feeling that this happened more so with a relationship um maybe romantic but um also friend family relationship where they were the dream for some of you and that dream ended up being a lie um 
deceitful energy I'm getting here. Um, but in a way, that was freeing for you. And I, I guess that ties back to this Two of Cups where, um, believe it or not, the, the thing that didn't work within that relationship actually allowed you to focus more on yourself and what you want to accomplish in this world and how you can express both your shadow uh, and your inner child and your higher self, like all these aspects to you is like group meeting, let's get together <laughs> and decide what we're meant to do in this planet and how we want to live our lives um, in the best and highest way. And um, I don't know, I, I feel like you already do that. It's just more of um, this pile might have a tendency to shelve these ideas. Uh, maybe it's because you get them too quickly and you just can't act on them right now. Um, and it's kind of hard to go back on these ideas once they're written down or whatever um, because the spark isn't there. And that spark is incredibly important. That's what makes you move and take action, as I keep saying, you know. Um, so when the spark isn't there. But when the spark gets there uh, and you don't know what to do with this energy that you just got, um, that would be a nice time to take out your notebook, to your drawing pad, your dream workbook or... Uh, whatever it is, your phone, if you have take notes, um, and kind of, and I just thought like it, it, it is a good idea to separate higher self ideas and shadow self ideas. Um, not to say, Oh, this is good. This is bad. But like when the, the energies are opposite. So how do I say this? when um you're feeling still depressed that's when the ideas come in um and i butchered that by the way so you can just ignore that i'm not <laughs> i'm not gonna edit this because that'll take a day and a half um but really it's blending these two these two uh, I, parts of you again of um like how do i ground this into reality that's a really big thing i think the healing comes from uh, not only using this inspiration to make change in your physical environment, but I also think healing will come from f like a financial increase, like a, a physical reward, like monetary compensation. This is like, yes, we did a thing and here's something that is a physical representation of that. And um, I, I'd say like, uh, like washing a car, you know, you think of washing a car, the car gets washed and now it looks gorgeous and it looks like new and then you want to take it for a ride and then you end up going somewhere you've never been and you met someone like, all. it's a chain um, reaction that happens and that scenario is caused by a full integration and communication with these versions of yourself. So let's just get one more Oracle card before closing out the reading. Um, It says, the white oak, healing, versatility, endurance. And this um, is confirmation about this um, tree energy that you've got going on, this connection to nature, the grounding, um, healing energy of oak, but also, as the card suggests, um, you're in it for the long haul. And so these ups and downs are um, things that you are working within yourself. Again, bursts of energy and then receding and then moving forward and then receding. It's a long journey. Um, and I think this pile prefers... I said um, that this pile probably prefers starting over finishing. And then the camera is just like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm over it. Um, but all that to say... I f feel like this this pile is has strong cardinal sign placements or attributes, specifically with Aries and Capricorn. Um, you're meant to lead, lead yourself, lead your personal army um, into this strange world that we're in, a beautiful world, ha! Huh? Tie into this beautiful place, Tarot. Um, I'm gonna close out the reading with that actually. But don't forget to check out Letty's part of the collaboration where she'll be looking at how you can heal um, childhood trauma. 
Um, but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this reading. Please let me know in the comments, um, especially with collaborations. I love finding out how um, the two readings or, um, come together and um, build upon each other. That's always exciting for me. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Hi, Pile2. If you chose this card, this is going to be your reading on how you can heal your shadow self. A collaboration with Letty from This Beautiful Place Tarot. And I'm going to have a link to her reading in the description. Um, so yeah, this card actually represents your shadow self. We're going to get a few more cards just to check in with the shadow energy and we'll take the reading from there. This pile, though, it feels as though you are very much connected to your shadow self, that um, in a lot of ways you are your shadow and you are your higher self, um, but the shadow comes through fairly, pretty strongly here, um, where you've learned to take maybe what was once oppressive thoughts and look, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. That sword's energy is very strong. Probably Aquarius, um, Gemini, Libra energy. Um, there's some healing that can be done here, but uh, your shadow is very good at transmuting um, energy. And again, I kind of feel like a lot of this has to do with outside external influences. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to show you the cards, but I'm going to pull one more oracle. The universe, right. Um, with the Queen of Swords, it, it kind of feels like this world is yours to conquer and your shadow sees it as a challenge. Uh, what's interesting, though, is that sometimes that energy, that shadow energy, will create problems um, because it's bored. Uh, so we have the Princess of Swords, which... Um, kind of i i feel this um i think in a general sense but especially with this pile that this shadow energy was created by your inner child and so i think um i'd be extra curious about this connection to letty's part of the reading uh from this beautiful place tarot with the um childhood trauma and seeing how that would relate to this and that this pile this shadow was a creation of that trauma um, but then we have the ace of pentacles and we'll notice with i mean there are crows slash ravens uh, throughout the deck but um, there is a special connection with this pile with crows and ravens communication is very strong i kind of feel like this pile would be i'm gonna get water i'm sorry oh, i need it my lips are so dry um this is like a tele telepathic pile, right? Um, clear cognizant, a very strong clear cognizance, and that might have been an issue for you in the past, especially in childhood, where these recurring thoughts you t would take ownership of them, um, but they weren't necessarily yours, and the, I could even see it as like. Um, past life thought patterns, ancestral thought patterns um, of self-doubt. And I think at this point in your life, you've taken those and um, molded them to your will. And um, now you're at this place where you think deliberately as to impact the world around you. Again, with this Queen of Swords, it's like, you feel the world is something that you can conquer and that that strength comes through very strongly mm. i'm just gonna leave this water here because we do have the five of cups and i am gonna pull uh an additional card to clarify this one um let's do that right now actually oh but yeah with the universe being here There's just such a strong conquering energy with this shadow. And that's the biggest thing that so far I'm thinking of is that it's gonna, the shadow energy is gonna conquer something. And so <laughs> it's best to put it to work 
um, to have this part of you by your side as an ally as opposed to putting it in a box and saying not right now. Um, I had mentioned that a little bit in Pile 1, but with this pile it might be even more um, of a thing to take note of. That if this shadow is not conquering objectives that you create, it's going to conquer you. It's going to conquer people around you and it's going to... Um, I could imagine this, not to say that this is something that you do, but I've seen it with other people where um, they'll just kind of lash out. They'll, um, the type of person who says, oh, I'm being honest, but they're you know, being rude about it. You don't need the attitude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, we have the Ten of Pentacles, though. Underneath the Five of Cups. This says a couple of things. Uh, maybe uh, it's kind of weird that I'm getting this twice in the same pos well not the same position but uh, maybe this card kind of reminds me of like a divorce or separation or something like that um, from I'm gonna get another card actually from a stable place uh, but another thing is that if you've gone that route already um, actually the separation was what's bringing you towards um, a more stable, um, independent, nurturing environment. And so there might have been a, a pretty sharp and drastic transition. Um, again, just going back to the whole childhood thing, maybe your parents were divorced. Um, that left quite an impact. Maybe one parent was able to 616 um, better support you financially and one person was better able um, leaned in towards emotional support and loving um, or the opposite could be the case where um, like one of your parents married into you know met someone else and that stepmom or stepdad was kind of cold towards you. I'm kind of getting that vibe a little bit here, but let's get one more card just to clarify before moving on towards the healing part. Eight of Swords. Yeah, so the swords are there. Uh, they're very strong. I kind of feel as though um, most of this healing has been done, but this is kind of a reminder of how far you've come with this. That either way, you've almost felt trapped in between these two situations. Um, so, uh, part of me is saying you felt as though you had to choose between two evils, or two... What's the term? How do you say it? Lesser of two evils, or something like that. Um, or you've almost felt bound by family. You've almost felt bound by... I'm going to say family again. <laughs> it feels like... Uh, almost being trapped and we have the castle and i think at this point because you are the queen already um there's just ha you've had that revelation that the swords are yours um that you're really not bound by anything and that you're able to um, create your own financial abundance and your own um expression on this planet but let's get to the healing portion uh what is it how can you heal this energy if it needs healing um, or integration or anything like that? So yeah, the Three of Swords is coming through. King of Pentacles. So there's a relationship here between... Um, because so far that's all there is. Pentacles and Swords. Yeah, Pentacles and Swords. Um, and so this suggests maybe a healing, a mindset towards money. Um, if the term is just thinking about budgeting or money um, leaves you feeling a certain way, it might be because of this, um, again, kind of, this is Letty's part of the reading with the childhood sort of thing, but it's kind of coming through here as well, where um, maybe, I don't know, I'm kind of sensing that there was a relationship that held you hostage by being your financial support and that was you know like a codependent sort of relationship going on and that that left a bit of trauma now you're at this place where you were completely unwilling <laughs> to allow this king of pentacles back into your life um, because it might be triggering he's like someone who's financially well off and wants to treat you to a dinner you're like no don't treat me to dinner <laughs> i don't want you to take me out um, i'm perfectly capable and the thing is is that it's still for some people an expression of love so like 
buying a cake or whatever i don't know um the more extravagant this gift that you receive is i think the more triggered you get by it which is interesting um but at the same time there's a maturity to this and so this is almost asking you to reflect upon the the source of that um this pain that happens with this three of swords um knowing that you're at a place to um you're you're in a space where you can provide your, for yourself you've already done that i think um but also to be mindful of the use of swords more swords uh, with the five of swords um, in with this shadow energy there might be a tendency to kind of lash out sometimes look at there's this is all swords <laughs> you guys this is all swords i don't know what to tell you um five of swords and the four of swords back to back so and what's interesting is one sword's facing up one is down one is a dagger and the other one is a an Egyptian sword, I don't know the name, sorry. Um, but you'll notice that this Five of Swords, I mean, it feels very different, but it's like taking the high road. Um, even if there's negativity around you, even if there's backstabbing, and even if you notice um, the, again, codependent tendencies of um, just very ugly, honestly, um, Words slipping. Uh, an ugly tendency to use guilt to lure you in and make you feel trapped. Um, just be mindful of that and be mindful of your power over swords, very specifically over thought patterns, uh, very specifically over what you write, um, because your word, your thoughts are um, enhanced in a way. They're extremely powerful, more so than most people and um it's your mind that'll set you free really it is your mind that'll set you free uh, and then we have the death card i'm going to clarify this death card um let's do that right now it's scorpio energy coming through and finally some more pentacles we have the eight or not more pentacles more cups eight of cups um so i am getting that sense of and this kind of looks like a child right this this squid um but that you felt left out in the dark by a situation um that had you heartbroken and the shadow remembers it and it's not going to forget it um part of it is this healing happens naturally another part of it is um realizing that you don't need other people but i think the biggest healing lesson would be allowing um, friends, family, whatever it is, into your life, knowing that you have the capacity to defend yourself properly, that you don't need to go into relationships and situations uh, with the sword wielded already. Um, this healing is all about um, letting the past be in the past and remain back there. Um, it's a reflection of how far you've come, and when you do think of these, or experience these sort of triggers, um, I think it's also fair to experience, um, your own growth through those memories, so I'm just knowing that without this heartbreak, without this loss, without, um, this borderline abusive, maybe emotionally ab abusive relationships, not to say that it's good, but that you did become a lot stronger because of that. This sense of power that you have is the result of um, some of that trauma. And on the other side, now you have the capacity to very, 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 very strongly <laughs> influence people around you. You have a very strong power with that. Very, very. I was going to say it two more times right with the swords now it's your turn and now it's your responsibility to wield that sword with kindness um and 
just knowing the strength and the weight that you have behind the sword, behind your mind, your mental energy, um, it's extremely strong. Um, but all that to say that you, your shadow <laughs> is ready to fight. Uh, it doesn't need to, but really what it's fighting for is your own freedom. Um, it does not want to go back into this Eight of Swords energy, and so I wouldn't be surprised if at an intuitive level, level, um, you notice, um, you don't even have to talk to people, but you'll notice when they carry that energy of trying to suck you in, of trying to uh, make you feel small in any way, and you'll just feel a vibe of, I don't want to be around this person at all, and I'm not going to deal with it. Um, that that's, that feeling is very true. Um, but it's also part of the healing is remembering that there's people that are not like that out there. There's people who are loving, who um, are willing to give you attention, love, material things, whatever it is, and not want something in return. And that's kind of a relation you'll have to find for yourself before it actually manifests in the physical. Um, so it says, Autumn wins new paths, changes, and unseen forces. And that's kind of why the death card was the end. You know, one of the last cards that I pulled. Um, allowing that blockage, that mental state to go. Um, allow the past to be back there and to uh, move forward in confidence knowing that the path is yours to create. And there's beautiful things ahead. You know, I think I said that in a recent short uh, where expect beauty, expect success, expect good things to come to you. Because as I said multiple times, uh, your mind is remarkably powerful. And so when you expect that, um, those expectations will manifest. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close the reading out. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please let me know how this reading connects with Letty's reading. If you haven't seen her part of the collaboration, um, that information is going to be in the description. And yeah, I look forward <laughs> to seeing uh, how they connect. Um, thank you again, Letty. This was her idea, so thank her. This is a great topic, I think. Um, but yeah, I hope to see you in the next reading. Take care. Hi, Pile 3. If you chose this card, this is going to be your reading on how you can heal your shadow self. A collaboration with Letty from This Beautiful Place Tarot. Um, I'm going to have a link to her reading in the description box um, where she's going to be looking at healing your um, childhood trauma. But for this, this card actually represents your shadow. Uh, Honestly, a beautiful card, uh, Valkyrie <laughs> with wings. I mean, there's a, a running theme among these cards, but or I should say these piles, but I'm just going to put that to the side for now. And we'll take a look at, first of all, the overall energy of your shadow, and then we'll look at healing uh, your shadow. Yeah, we'll just take it from there, you know. I don't know do, if this pile works with, I mean, I guess most people uh, who watch these would work with some sort of some form of deities and goddesses, but I feel like this one is coming through a bit more strongly, and when you do, I think your shadow self is definitely involved. We have um, this card. <laughs> the pillars are coming through, so I don't know if some of you saw pile one. Um, with Anubis showing up here, a sense of balance, underworld again. So uh, we also have the Prince of Cups. So I think um, this energy is in itself balanced. The shadow self is um, kind of lighthearted, actually, um, while having a foot in the underworld. Um, so there's that... Uh, with the Valkyrie being there, there's like a beauty, an elegance, but a, an immense power that people can sometimes overlook. And overlooking that could be problematic for those around you because 
um, again, with Valkyrie being there, I'm kind of sensing Thor as well. There's this desire to destroy within this shadow. Um, but it's overall balanced, you know. I'm not seeing anything that needs healing straight away. Um, we're gonna get some more cards in a second, but let me just get an Oracle card first. Um, and I'll elaborate what these cards mean as we move forward in the reading. We have Fate. Huh. Fate goes very nicely with uh, the Tower card being here. Um, maybe that is part of what needs healing, is the acceptance of things that are outside of even the Shadow Self's control, kind of undermining its power, which is not a good feeling always, but also um, the alternative to that is um, the shadow can also relax a little bit. It's like, oh, well, there's nothing I can do about that. I'm just going to allow it to happen and take it easy for now, which um, is part of this balance that happens here. Um, but we'll, we'll find out what all this means as we continue on to the reading. I'm just going to get to it. So how can you heal your shadow? Queen of Pentacles in reverse, judgment. There's a lot of that energy here, chariot. Chariot is fitting for the Valkyrie and then the Ace of Swords. Hmm. But that fate energy. And I'm kind of remi reminded of uh, like very strong, powerful, uh, world ending. <laughs> Um, energy, if you will, for this pile, for this um, shadow. But what I'm also thinking of is, I don't know how many of you saw Thor Ragnarok, you know, that one good Thor movie, uh, where all the Valkyrie are killed with the exception of um, the Valkyrie, the main character from that movie. Um, there is a sacrifice um, kind of def fighting against Hela, um, but it's almost like, and I'm also thinking of another superhero character, Nova, who gains his power only after his whole planet was destroyed. And so there's almost something of, you've gained your strength, your shadow has gained its strength and its beauty from catastrophe. I mean, you even see with this judgment card that there's healing taking place within the shadow. So I do think that the healing is something that happens quite naturally. And this healing makes the shadow stronger, your shadow self stronger. But what's interesting is that you don't, I don't think you see it so much as a shadow as just, it's, there's a very strong sense of integration with you already. I also see um, that your shadow loves movement. <laughs> This is a fast-moving shadow pile, and anything that blocks that is, um, it, it just feels very heavy. I don't think your shadow likes to feel heavy, which is something that maybe you don't expect to hear. You know, shadow can be associated with dark, with um, heaviness, uh, but this shadow is very light, almost angelic in nature, if that makes sense. Alright, and so... I think part of the healing is um, changing your perspective on movement or rather on stillness, that stillness uh, not only physically but in situations isn't, doesn't need to be seen as a prison, as a trap, as judgment in a way where you're being punished because your situation isn't changing. Um, I think part of it is um, your shadow self wants to have the power to make things happen and destroy, you know, in environments, of course, not literally, but um, situations where, you know, you're stuck at a job. Uh, I'm just thinking of that, actually. <laughs> you're stuck in a living situation that's not ideal, and when you can't do something about it, you feel powerless, but I think part of this healing is that your power comes to the connect comes with the connection to the to the divine. And I think that's 
uh, an even greater source of your power is faith is um knowing that these cosmic earthly energies are here to support you and um, it's almost like these external forces uh, or universal cosmic forces are working on your behalf and um, I think as that connection gets stronger your shadow heals um, so that that sense of um, feeling unsupported might be part of um, the mindset of the shadow energy or kind of like a uh, a byproduct, <laughs> sorry, um, is uh, I am hopeless, uh, or I something along those lines, right? Where it doesn't make you weak for needing um, spirit, your ancestors, so forth, stuff like that. Um, celestial energies, even you know, star seed assistance. Needing assistance doesn't make you weak, and. Um, I think the more you acknowledge that, uh, the more assistance you'll get and the more powerful you become um, as a result of that. And then we have this four of wands, which is breaking free with the chains there. Um, but what's interesting is that although the wings are being spread, there's still a boundary here. There's still these two rows of uh, wands and those two rows represent uh, kind of the same thing with the pillars, boundaries, the yin and yang, uh, divine masculine and feminine and so forth, where you're still protected by the universe. You are not. You don't have to do this alone. Let's get some more cards, though. I kind of want to do... Let's look at this Ace of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles. I completely ignored that Queen of Pentacles in reverse. So let's take a look at that. Let's we'll start with that Queen of Pentacles, Chariot, and then the Ace. Another reversal, that's weird. Um, this one being the Six of Pentacles. In reverse. Uh, Six of Pentacles, I think, is Taurus with the Moon, uh, which is interesting. It kind of feels like a lack of balance, which is in also interesting given that the Scales card was right above it. Um, and so... You almost feel, I think, the shadow feels at times that it's the world in itself is not a balanced place um, that might cause anger um, within you and a very strong desire to make change, uh, which isn't in itself bad. I do think part of your life purpose might be in a way to bring, uh, summon these energies to create great change. Um, and so destruction in a way is not a bad thing at least not for this pile uh, we do have the page of pentacles underneath the judgment card so it's almost like i don't know i do feel like the inner child would be helpful in healing the shadow where a more innocent way of navigating the world um, because i do think that you've seen a lot of injustice and um, a lot of destruction, self-destruction, not necessarily for yourself, but for others. And um, it's changed the way that you feel that you can navigate the world. Um, that you almost feel as though you have to keep a distance um, from the people, the humans below, in order to be successful. But um, it's almost like your shadow is saying that you're protected enough to be able to um, interact with the physical world in confidence, knowing that you know you you're strong enough. You're strong enough to to be here. You know, uh, we do have the nine of pentacles showing up. So quite a few pentacles in this reading. Um, you might have failed a venture, a small business venture, or have had trouble starting it up that potential is still there. Like you could still make it happen, even though this tower card might have happened. And so there's kind of a mix of, a, it's like a reoccurring thing where um, maybe there's some childhood uh, influences or whatever, childhood trauma, you'll have to look at Letty's part of the reading for that. But here it's more like a more recent inability to 
keep something going and build that momentum. But um, I think what's missing is um, it's not that you're unable to do it on your own, but um, having faith in the support around you, in the trees and um, the spiritual guidance that it's there and that you do have beings that are willing and able to help you and they're still there for you even when you experience these tower moments they're still there i mean keeping you safe and i think sometimes you feel like you want to dismiss um your guides sometimes not always of course or dismiss your ancestors when things like this happen but um the realization that this is really just clearing the path so that you can build something brand new from it um, seeing it as an opportunity to create a world that's more balanced and more fair. I am kind of feeling a strong Libra energy with this. Um, you prioritize fairness, and that's something that's interesting about you is that you're not willing to cut corners to make money. <laughs> you're not willing to compromise who you are, um, your moral va values, and there's this part of you that feels like you're being punished <laughs> for being a good person. Uh, that's not the case. It is part of what makes you stronger. It is part of your journey. Um, and you do have the capacity to not only be aligned to your moral compass in a positive way, but also make, you know, make money. Here we have the emperor. Look at that. There we go. Um, again, ruling, having ownership of yourself, you know, having um, balance and structure. But what's cool is that we have this emperor underneath the tower. So um, I don't know, I, I kind of feel this mutual relationship between your conscious self and your shadow world. They're, they're both working together in destroying <laughs> situations, relationships potentially, or even job opportunities um, that don't work for you so that you can create something for yourself. I'm getting a strong sense of like, uh, not only independent energy, but a self-starter. And I keep mentioning, I guess recently, like uh, uh, your own business. I kind of feel like your shadow really wants you to have your own business or be self-employed like very strongly. Um, that you're able to thrive off of that and um, by having this business and having this autonomy uh, you'll be healing your shadow um, I don't know it just feels very strong and it, it also feels very liberating um, that you won't be at the mercy of the world's imbalanced rules <laughs> Uh, that you could play fair and in your own terms and not answer to anyone. It's very important for your shadow to not answer to anyone. Um, but let's get another oracle card. I think I'm going to close it out after this oracle. I don't know what happened. I don't know what just... This, uh, this pile kind of just went right through me. I don't know what I said at all. Whoops. The last two I kind of have an idea, but I don't know. That was kind of interesting. So yeah, uh, ocean tides. Tides being a representation of this balance, but more so um, the yin and yang of uh, chaos and comfort. You ride that line, and I think you've experienced it a lot. That's part of your journey, specifically within your shadow. But overall, uh, the biggest thing is that the ocean tide says individuality, strength, and formlessness. Individuality and strength through the shadows. And if you're someone who sees the world as a place that is filled with shadows and injustice, um, it's really part of that experience is so that you can realize your own strength and your own influence and um, just how high above... Um, not only the mundane, but kind of the mm, dishonest behavior you can be, you know. You don't have to cheat to be successful, and that's where your strength comes from. Um, 
And I, uh, last thing is like, I kind of feel it's your fate to make it. Like, you're almost destined to win. You're destined to be successful. You're destined to be independent. Again, uh, that's a very strong part of your shadow is um, being a supporting energy to allow you to um, be fully secure within yourself, fully independent, um, not answer to anybody. God forbid <laughs> you have to answer to someone that's not going to last. It just won't. There's no way. Uh, not with you. Um, you. You're meant to be a free bird, and that's... Um, your journey is how you can go about doing this, like creating the structure for yourself. Um, because when, whenever somebody else tries to uh, make rules for you, they just fall apart. It's that you're just too big to be confined um, by other people's um, ideals, you know, by other people's yeah you know, rules. It's just not enough to hold you in. <laughs> hold you down um, so really it's almost like working with the universe working with celestial beings with higher powers um, to create I think it is necessary to have that structure though um, so it's up to you to make it for yourself um, and I think that's why I keep going back to business like formulating creating your own business creating your own source of income is a huge step in healing your shadow so yeah with that i'm gonna go ahead and end the reading hopefully you enjoyed it please let me know in the comments how this reading connects with letty's uh reading with uh healing childhood trauma i'm very curious to see uh how those readings interact but yeah hopefully you enjoy this like subscribe and i hope to see you in the next reading take care